to our explainer tonight it's the debate that has been caused by the demands by the members of county assembly before they can pass that constitution amendment bill 2020 it's popularly known as the bbi but remember that was all put together and consolidated into a draft bill so let's begin first we will get into those numbers but put some context where are we with the referendum process let's track that process now what guides this is article 257 which talks about the way in which you can change the constitution using the popular initiative so where are we with that well the signatures were collected, about 4 million of them. They were then verified by the IEBC, um, about 1 million of them. It passed the threshold, and it is now at this next stage, following uh, the chair of Fula Chebukati, sending those signatures together with the draft bill to the... 47 county assembly speakers. It is now up to them and they hold the key to decide whether we will go to a referendum that means that you will get to vote or not. Now what is the constitutional requirement? A majority of the county assemblies which is 24. Where are we with that now? We have the first county that passed, that's Siaya County. We know of others like Kisumu that have already put in place a calls for public participation before they can start to debate that. So it is very clear that uh, the county assemblies hold the key to this referendum process by popular initiative, which is why we have seen the demands that have been made by the MCAs that are causing quite a bit of debate. So what have they asked for? They want salaries and pension, just like the MPs. You know, the MPs get, um, for those who have served two consecutive terms, get a pension. They also want a ward development fund, which they believe will give them financial autonomy. They won't necessarily need to go begging the governors and they will be able to determine development in their wards, similar to the National Government Constituency <laughs> Development Fund, popularly known as the at that meeting that would have around 534 MCAs of the ODM party. Watch. Unaweza kufanya maswala ya hospitali. Unaweza kufanya laboratory. Unaweza kufanya dental unit. So that is what is being told to them. What are their other demands? Well, they want facilitation money to be able to popularize uh, this amendment bill. In addition, here it is, the one that is causing all the conversation, a two million shillings car grant. And this is what the Condele MCA had to say about that. Baba, just ensure that we get the car grant and leave the rest to us. Thank you very much. Demands? Yes. Well, there is justification, at least according to them and the proponents of the BBI, who say this is why they believe the MCAs deserve that. Listen to uh, ODM leader Raila Odinga. If we can justify giving a car grant to members of parliament, why not to, to the, the members of county assembly? So don't make passing the BBI conditional to the car grant. Car grant is coming. It's a word of honor. So they say, just like the MPAs, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So let's take a look at just what that means. We have 1,450 elected members of county assembly, plus 774 nominated members. That brings it to 2,224 MCAs across the country. So what would it mean for that 2 million shillings? Well, if you multiply that by uh, the total number of MCAs, you get 4.5 billion shillings. Now, this is a huge amount of money. What would it mean? Let's put it into context, for instance. Uh, many people have been quoting uh, the former Premier Raila Odinga, who told the doctors and the healthcare workers to be understanding. So what would this 4.5 billion shillings do in this country? Well, for one, if you're speaking of the doctors, this 4.5 billion shillings is enough to employ 2,000 doctors, and according to that CBA, it will then give them their salaries for between two to three years. What would this 4.5 billion shillings do, just to give you some context? You know the COVID-19 fund? Well, they set aside 1.9 billion shillings for PPEs for all healthcare workers, that is doctors, nurses, clinical officers, and that 1.9 billion would fund those PPEs for up to two years. So if you put that into the 4.5 billion, you see what that can do. In addition, remember how ODM has insisted that the referendum itself would cost 2 billion and not the 14? So this 4.5 billion would be enough to fund two referenda. That's not all. It would be able to give the doctors comprehensive group life cover. 
and group personal accident cover that would um, enable that they get compensation in the event that they, a doctor is lost. It would give compensation to the family of up to 48 million shillings. Which county, what county would it run? Well, Lamu County for at least two financial years. So this is the amount of money that we are talking about today. However, the debate here is, is it as easy as Priscilla Nyokabi made it out to be? Let's take a look. And the president has already issued a directive on the car grant. Sasa tunangojia two paperwork. Tunangojia logistics, the COB, the SRC, you know. Now we are just waiting for the logistics. Is it that simple? Does it only take a directive from the president? Well, maybe not so fast. Two things have to happen here. One, there is this independent constitutional body known as the SRC, whose job it is to set and adjust remuneration for state officers. MCAs happen to be that, and they would take into consideration a lot of factors, including prevailing economic circumstances in the country. Would that 4.5 billion shillings, if it would be passed by the SRC and Parliament, would it be available to the MCAs today, right now, next month, maybe the month after, before June, for instance? Not so fast. Why? The County Governments Act of 2012 that states, and I quote, that a county government legislation that confers a direct benefit, whether financial or in kind, on members of the, the county assembly shall come into force after the next general election of the members of county assembly. Anything they pass now will only be available to the MCAs in 2022. That is if most, some, or all of them manage to retain their seats until that moment. Let me just end by giving you some context to this issue of the demands by MCAs. This is not the first time we're hearing about it. It has come up time and again. Let me take you down memory lane. In 2019, the MCAs demanded a 5 million shillings car grant. This was during their legislative summit. Remember, the president and the deputy president skipped that summit, perhaps not wanting to be bound by those demands that are being made. In 2017, this was before the polls, both President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy pledged to support this push for the added uh, benefits. At the time, President Uhuru Kenyatta said MCAs should get equal treatment like MPs or other members of National Assembly and the Senators. In 2014, it was the same story during their retreat, again saying that they are entitled to the same treatment just like the MPs. And at the time, in 2014, this is exactly what President Uhuru Kenyatta said, and I quote, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If it is a grant, then it must be a grant for everybody. And again in 2018, Deputy President saying there must be fairness in all legislative arms. The point here being this issue has come up not once, not twice, but almost four times before and has never been affected. Whether this will happen this time around is what we wait to see. But let's not get confused. The MCs do get a chance to buy a vehicle, except it is a loan for three million shillings that needs to be repaid during their term. So that is what this whole uh, demand means. And let's see where it goes. Will they be lucky, what, the fifth, sixth time over? That will wait to be seen. That is my explainer on the MCA's demands, even as we continue with the debate, whether they will get it or not in this financial year, certainly not until 2022. That's our explainer tonight.